Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to N5D Radio's Cosmic Awakening Show, where we are serving this galaxy and beyond. My name is Michelle Walling, and I'm with N5D.com, and our goal is to reach as many people as possible with a database of articles, videos, and radio shows that will help aid you in your spiritual awakening. At the Cosmic Awakening Show, we encourage you to question everything. And tonight, we have a special program for you. I'd like to welcome N5D Radio's Greg Prescott to the show. Hi, Greg. Hi, Michelle. (laughs) Welcome from the other room in the N5D studio. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. And I've got some serious echo going on here, so you have to... I have to apologize. Okay. Um, well, I'm not sure why. You have your speakers down and everything, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It's really bad. So what I'm, I'm going to do Why yeah, don't you hang what I'm up? Do and... I'm calling in right now. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, we're waiting for Greg to call back in. Um Let's see. I just want to let everybody know that this is Q&A with Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling from N5D.com. And um, you can call in by calling area code 646-716-8890. Be sure to press 1 when you're in the queue so it puts your hand up and we know that you are um, have a question. So, Greg, are you back with us? I am back without echo. Okay, that sounds great. Awesome. Well, we tested it out before the show. I don't know uh, what was happening there, but... Yeah. Um, well, listen, I, I for all the listeners who may be joining in on this N5D Cosmic Awakening show tonight, could you let them know about the websites that you run, Greg? Sure. Well, first and foremost, we have N5D.com. And uh, we get between 1 to 3 million plus visitors every month there. It's a really popular website, and uh, we just absolutely love all of our N5D family. And thanks to everyone that's tuning in right now or is listening on YouTube uh, of the recorded session. Um, We cover a wide gamut of everything, and there's a little... Uh, search bar in the upper right-hand corner of N5D where you can just type in whatever you're looking for and chances are you'll find it. Um, my other w- website that um, I update every every day uh, is called BodyMindSoulSpirit.com and uh, that's another awesome website where you can find a lot of uh, amazing information there uh, from spiritual to, uh, you know, right down the gamut to everyday life and health uh, tips so, uh, you know, between the uh, two websites, we really cover a wide um, gamut of, of, of material that goes from the novice to the expert in, in this field, and uh, we just keep putting more and more out every day, 365 days a year. Awesome. And, of course, I um, I help you out with N5D, and I also have several websites, offshoots uh, for of the N5D family, um, we all work together to share different levels of information, um, mm-hmm. meaning that I have CosmicStarseeds.com, and that's just a database of all of my articles and videos that I've ever shared on N5D or Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit, and all the radio shows that I've done on N5D Radio. So that's just my little database. And then I have uh, how to exit the matrix.com where you can find more of the esoteric studies of the paranormal, the quantum aspects of our reality, or information about the Archons, the Anunnaki, uh, False Light Matrix, things like that. And uh, I have the starchildren.net, 
which is a new site I started that uh, d- that helps uh, parents with children, young children, who are exhibiting the traits of of a child that may have three strands of DNA or more activated upon birth, meaning that they are exhibiting um, superhuman abilities or maybe they are rem- recalling their past lives or um, maybe they are just a prodigy at something, a child prodigy like in the music or arts or math or science. Um, so that's a really important website because um, these children uh, need to be supported. I mean, we know all children need to be supported, but these in particular have something that they're a mission that they're here to do as a star seed uh, in a child in a child's body. And with all the things out there poisoning us these days, we need to make sure that they, in particular, do not get um, their vibration lowered. And so um, you've already talked about our our YouTube channel on N5D where you can find all of the N5D radio shows as well as N5D network video shows. And um, let's see if I've covered the gamut. We are just so busy. I guess uh, we have N5D Marketplace, which is another uh, site that you probably want to check out. It's a free platform for those who have products and services that they would like to share. And uh, we created um, n5dshop.com. And right now we have over 300 ebooks available for you to download. And um, very soon we'll be adding N5D t-shirts and N5D mugs and other metaphysical supplies as uh, right after our conference as I have more time to dedicate to adding uh, inventory to that site. Now, um, let's just briefly talk about our conference and get right into this Q&A. Um, our N5D Superpower Activation Conference is coming up here in little over a week, and I'm so excited been working very hard to get all of our inventory ready for our N5D vendor table, um, making table assignments for the rest of our wonderful vendors, uh, making sure that they have the seat uh, layout ready at the venue. We just went over there today and checked things out, and um, you could just, I don't know, I could just imagine everybody in there and how wonderful this is going to be. Um, We have a few tickets still available, uh, but we'll have to cap it um, at the maximum number of people that the venue can hold. So if you're planning to come to the conference to see us live and in person, um, please get your ticket now at n5devents.com. Greg, we have people coming from all over the U.S. right now, Colorado, Ohio, Michigan, New York, New Jersey, Kansas, Georgia, Texas, and we also have a lot of fellow Floridians joining us, so all of the sunshine lovers can meet each other. Greg, are you there? Hmm. I can't hear you, Greg. Are you muted? <laughs> yes, I am. I was muted. I'm sorry. Um, okay, but yeah, you're fired. But like I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> like I was saying uh, <laughs> to myself, apparently, um, there's so many people coming around from all over the place, and uh, there's not very many tickets left. So if you want to come, get get your tickets soon because they're selling out. Do you want to try to call back in on Skype, Greg? Is that, or do you want to just stay on the phone? Yeah, I can try. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, while you're doing that, okay, <laughs> I'll catch you in just a second. Okay. All right. So, um, just want to share with the folks a little bit about what we do have um, at the conference. I um, cleared and programmed the Orgon Organite pyramids today, which have. Um, 99% quartz crystal sands within them as long as well as uh with some metals and they're beautiful. I took some pictures and put them up on the N5D Superpower Activation Conference uh event page and uh you can see that on the N5D um 
Facebook page as well. So, um, yeah, you might want to check those out. And we're going to be putting whatever we don't sell on the um, on the website. Hey, Greg, are you back? I am back. That sounds better than the phone. Good, good. Um, I think okay. I figured it out, and we're good to go. Okay, great. All right. Well, we also have N5D t-shirts and mugs um, at the conference. We have a limited um, availability on the t-shirts, and we have uh, an order form on n5devents.com if you want to go ahead and pre-order your t-shirt, and we'll have it waiting for you. So, for those who can't come to the conference, well, we will surely miss you, but guess what? We're going to record it for you because... You know, we don't want you to miss out on any information that we're going to be given, giving about activating your DNA. We also have one vendor table available. So if you're listening out there and you're in the Florida area around Sarasota next weekend, uh, February 20th, and you have something you'd like to sell at our uh, conference, be sure and um, go on the n5devents.com page and go to the vendor section and check that out. All right, so let's get right into our q and A. Um, going to check the chat room for any questions so far. Candace is in the chat room. Candace is joining us at the conference, and she'll be calling in here very soon. Um, okay, Man for Peace in the chat room has a question, Greg. Many okay. people would say that soul is an individual aspect of consciousness a unique part of creation where spirit might be considered to be that which is not in physical from a more undefined aspect of creation? Mm-hmm. Well, question is there. I think I think <laughs> I understand that. You know what what is basically the difference between soul oh, and there spirit? <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think that that is pretty accurate what he what he put in there because uh, the, the the spirit is the uh, like like your higher self the um, over soul that thing but the soul is actually the incarnation the physical incarnation that comes with you into this uh, vessel that we call <laughs> human flesh so uh, yeah I think that's that's pretty accurate I would I would agree with that man for peace sorry man for peace that was your question. <laughs> The uh, chat room had already scrolled down by the time I saw that um, typed in there. So, yeah, come on, <laughs> type in some more questions. I'm, la- I'm laughing at Candace, man for peach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I'm, not, I'm not so sure I understand all that, man for peace, because mm, the oversoul, and to, you know, the oversoul to me, and there's so many different words and terminologies out there, but the oversoul seems like that that is the larger part of yourself that's out in the cosmos, um, perhaps even outside of this universe. Um, and then that oversoul sends forth an aspect of itself to have an incarnation. And to me, it seems like that, I could be wrong, but it seems like that the spirit is part, the part that, incarnates and when you when you leave the body you become a spirit again so i'm not so sure that's a really good question what's the difference between soul and spirit because i think greg and man for peace uh say it's one way and i have to say that i'm understanding things a different way so i don't know that i'm correct here um, but i know that one thing's for sure is so much information has been put out there to keep us continually confused uh, on words. And words, um, you know, the English language was created to uh, keep us under domination control and to use black magic spelling against us. And if you notice, many of our words have several different meanings. And it's very confusing to from other languages that are trying to learn English. Um, and, you know, English is has been somehow forced upon the world as the main um, language to be used uh, because the United States has been trying to take over the world. (laughs) Greg, I can't hear you. I didn't say anything. (laughs) Oh, great. All right, so we got crickets in the air tonight. (laughs) 
All right. So uh, I don't see any more um, questions in the chat room. And right now, if you have called in, we have several people who have called in. Be sure and raise your hand to let us know that you're ready to talk to us and by pressing 1. Okay? Otherwise, I assume that you're just listening. Okay, well, we don't have any other questions, so I'm going to topic. Uh, Greg, you and I, uh, we pretty much sit around and talk every single day, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, we bounce ideas off of each other. And uh, we're trying to discern what is truth and what is disinfo. And I think that a lot of people out there are having the same issues. Um, And, you know, for me, the last thing I want to do ever is to put something out there that, you know, may have some disinfo in it or some confusing information and have people running around in circles. So, you know, I try to spend more time discerning what feels right to me. How do you uh, feel into whether something is BS or whether it's uh, your truth? You know, the uh, big word that goes around and you hear it time and time again, but it's so true, discernment. Does it sound right to you? Does it sound like the truth? Does it, does it feel like the truth? You know, the truth has a certain vibration, a certain energy to it. And uh, while we know that everything is basically turned upside down and backwards in our reality, the truth still has its own vibration, and that's going to hold true no matter what. So, uh, you know, go inside. What does it sound like to you? Listen to your higher self. You know, if it sounds like truth, chances are it is. And the good thing about it is that if you do follow a path, perhaps it sounded truthful and uh, things change. Well, you know what? There's a reason why you were guided down that path and there was a lesson to, lesson to be learned. But ultimately, you're always going to be guided in the right direction, uh, down the right path, and going, going to be led to find ultimately what your truth is. Well, for me, um, I have made, you know, I have made some mistakes, and I think deliberately that was supposed to happen so that I could realize what it felt like, you know. Oftentimes you have that first gut instinct when you hear something or feel something. Um, mm-hmm. You know, have you ever, like, felt that kind of like that alarm, alarming feeling, like your adrenaline starts kind of rushing and you kind of feel like something's wrong, but then... All, all of a sudden, you talk yourself into calming down, and then you make the second-hand choice, you know, and then you realize, well, that was stupid. That wasn't the right one after all. I, I should have known something didn't feel right from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you on that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next topic. I have a lot of <laughs> – uh, I've, I've had a <laughs> – I guess you don't have anything else to say. Um, I've had a lot of synchronicities leading me to um, one thing or another. And, you know, you are my witness. It has been crazy. It's so crazy. Um, And so, you know, I pay attention to these synchronicities and I take them um, as, I have been taking them as, well, I really need to pay attention to to this um, because it, there's a synchronicity tied to it. And um, I study a whole lot, and it just seems like the right things come at the right time that match up with something else to give me confirmation. And we are talking like oh, just like things that are undeniably um, far further than a coincidence. So, um, But my question to you, Greg, is do you think that there could be negative synchronicities as well to deliberately lead someone down the wrong path? And that would probably be something that was set up by, I'm going to call them like trickster beings. Definitely. You know, but also I I think that we could be led down the wrong path because there's a valuable lesson to be learned uh, that will in, in in the end, make our spiritual growth grow even quicker uh, from the lessons that we learn. So, yeah, I definitely believe it's possible that there are these trickster beings that try to take us off the path. But as long as you're cognizant about what's going on, there's still that lesson to be learned, and it's going to make you stronger eventually in the end. And hopefully you'll 
find a way back to, back onto your your original path and uh, keep moving forward. What do you think? Well, I think that you're right, and you're really um, pointing to the fact that everything was created by Source, and uh, we are in a, a universe of positive and negative polarity. We're in a universe of service to self beings and service to others being beings. And um, the reason that this type of situation was created was for soul growth. And so the service to self beings kind of stir up the pot, so to speak. Otherwise, this would be a very stagnant place to come have an incarnation. I mean, mm-hmm. after if, you're, if you live for 2,000 years and you live in paradise and you're hanging out on the beach every single day and this, you have the same thing happening every day you get up and you're on the beach and you do that for 2,000 years and you're just living in bliss and don't have anything else to do, well, life might get a little boring. Indeed. I'm sorry. I muted myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, there there are so many lessons that were there to be learned, regardless of whether, you know, you are going down the wrong path. Because at, at some point, we're all going to go through that dark night of the soul. And, you know, you can question whether, you know, there were trickster beings that, that led us there, you know, through the culmination of all these negative things that have happened or whether you were guided actually to go there because that that is your your the real beginning I think in my opinion when when people have hit that dark night of the soul I'll tell them congratulations because from this point forward it's just going to keep getting better and better and you you thought this this is the culmination of all the lessons you need to learn and uh from this point forward it's 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 going to get a lot better and uh just make sure that you take the time to smell the roses and understand what lessons you learned and not to repeat these lessons as you go down, go down that path. Well, and on a higher, higher level, some people actually say that we are the, we are responsible for the thought forms that have gathered into our cons you know that that there that every thought is energy and all of the negative energy that's created created all these thought forms but i do think that there was um there was an artificial intelligence and uh, other races of beings that created the matrix that created uh the situations that made us think these negative thought forms but you know when we go to the fourth and fifth dimensions everything is tied together third fourth and fifth um you have a semi physical state and eventually you'll move more into a um a light body but you know in the in those dimensions um it um there's been many reports uh from different articles saying that you know the dark well let's just not call them the dark the negativity is is not gone it's just that our universe has been overly balanced uh, unbalanced um, with the negativity now. So it's more balanced, but yet maybe even more, it will grow even more into the light, uh, being more, you know, light even if it gets a little unbalanced and then it corrects itself again. So that's kind of like these cycles of time that we're going through. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I mean, I'd much rather it be overbalanced in the light's favor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also but, important to remember too, that um, as we're we're going through these these periods in our in our life where it might seem like these trickster beings are leading us down the wrong path, rest assured that you have help and guidance from your guides, your angels, your higher self, your oversoul. Every there's a lot of help that's going on on the other side that's guiding you back onto your path. So even though there there might be you know an archon or some some kind of trickster um, pushing you down the wrong path, you also have a lot of help that's pushing you right back on that path. So be aware of the positive synchronicities that are going on in your life. You know, if you're going down that bad path and you see that 1111 or whatever synchronistic number that, that works for you, I know that I see my birthday a lot. Um, and uh, I, other people might see the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 or, you know, something in the Fibon- Fibonacci sequence or something. These are These are signs that are telling you, hey, you have support we're helping you, we're with you, we're we're pulling for you, and uh, just make sure you learn the lessons along the way and, 
everything will be okay. Well, let's ask our friend who is uh, holding in the queue what she thinks about this. Missy Hill, welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. Hi, Michelle and Greg. How are you doing? Hi, Missy. We're we're doing wonderful, Missy. Thanks for calling in tonight. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a long time. Indeed. Well, hey, what do you think about negative synchronicities? And well, I mean, a synchronicity is a synchronicity, but do you think that um, that things can be orchestrated on the other side of the veil by the negative beings to, like, perhaps bring two people together, like a love bite situation, like um, Eve Lorgan talks about, or do you think that most synchronicities are really showing you that you're on the right path? I think probably most are showing you on the right path. However, I was pondering this a few months back about negative uh, synchronicity. I'm trying to remember what the storyline was, but yeah, sometimes it, it events can play out where it looks negative, but even if it is negative, in the long run it will still become positive because sometimes the situations need to be amplified for us to see what's going on with ourselves. You know, what, however it's playing out, um, it can appear negative, but then it, it can turn positive because if we decide to learn whatever lessons we need to learn, we can turn around and make anything that is negative positive. Yeah. Does that I make sense? Really- I'm trying to give an example, but, um, yeah, I, I think uh, – A lot of it for me was when I started unplugging uh, certain things in the dream state. I was having a lot of uh, negative type of uh, dreams, astral experiences. And then what came to me is the more we focus on what is, the more we get of what is. So if we don't like what we're looking at, then place our attention elsewhere, and then maybe we'll see something different because this is like years and months of, work that we've been doing in certain areas, like say, if you're having dreams about, you know, my lab or underground bunkers, and and that's not something you necessarily want to see for a negative example, then maybe don't listen to, you know, things that talk about that and reinforce that type of situation. And I'll give you a perfect example, because I just came back from the conspiracy cruise, talking about, you know, some of the... Nice. Negative. It was a lot of fun. I got to hang out with Laura Eisenhower and my friend uh, Joshua Warren, who wrote the book uh, Use the Force. You know, that's a uh, law of attraction based um, book. And I know you guys, you know, had a lot of guests on talking about that recently. But that was kind of interesting. I mean, we're watching a lot of the videos now because we didn't want to put a lot of attention on, you know, you know, GMOs or vaccines or all that stuff when we were on the ship because you don't want to get paranoid. And, you know, we went, it was Mexico, so, you know, we wanted to see the whales and the petroglyphs and do just a, a lot of fun things. But, I mean, just... When we were leaving to go on that trip, it seemed like negative synchronicity because it looked like we weren't even going to get out of here because we had a foot of snow. And it was just one thing after another that appeared negative, like, you know, we weren't going to be able to fly out of Asheville. The Charlotte Airport was closed. We had to go down to Greenville. And yet deep within myself, my inner core spirit kept saying in a still small voice, you're going. And I'm like, really? You're kidding me. You've got to be kidding. But we ended up there. So there, it, sometimes it's really dicey and it's like we don't know and yet we just have to really go deep within ourselves and feel are we doing the right thing and is it, and sometimes it's a moment-by-moment walk. Yeah. See, lately uh, the the things I'm questioning are the synchronicities related to some uh, some studies that I've been doing um, about the Anunnaki and, you know, mm-hmm. everything that we've been taught in the, let's just say, not New Age, but in over the last 20 years about the Anunnaki is that they were bad and, you know, they're the ones that changed our DNA and, you know, don't trust them. And, you know, Marduk is like, you know, one of the slickest uh, liars out there. And then you then I was reading synchronistically 
putting pieces of a puzzle together that were coming together beautifully that were basically saying um, a little bit of the opposite, that, well, basically Marduk is the only one not on board, but some of the, uh, most of the Anunnaki family of Anu um, have really kind of like woken up and realized what children they were and, you know, just coming in and, and breaking these uh, these rules and these laws and that they're actually um, feeling responsible and being held responsible and helping us uh, to uh, get ready to activate our DNA back, uh, reactivate it back to turn it back on. So if this all sounds right to me, and there was a whole lot of synchronicity bringing this stuff together, but since I don't have any firsthand experiences other than synchronicities, it gets a little dicey as to whether that's something that I'm ready to write about or not. Yeah, I, I can see your apprehension there. That's kind of uh, that's interesting, and I, I, I guess what's been coming to me is well, first of all, we don't definitely don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. However, a lot of these beings that I thought may have been good or this or that, I'm feeling everything has their their own agenda, and what's been coming to me is I love what Yoda says in you know, in the Star Wars uh, episodes, you must unlearn what you have learned. And I feel like I'm not (laughs) quoting that a lot. I'm not posting on Facebook a lot. It's another level of certain levels of information got me to where I am now, and yet on another level, I'm I'm unplugging and looking at all this again. Like even words like ascension. If we ascend, does that mean there's a descension? If uh, anything about the matrix, if there's some kind of matrix, does that imply uh, we're in the matrix? You know, certain uh, things of dimensions and all these things which has become a language and what we've been conditioned by. I'm like, is this all part of the machine? If the light is fighting against the dark, is this the, the ascension, descension? Is this part of the organic Earth timelines. I have been questioning a lot of these things and just, you know, wanting to stay connected to my core inner spirit. I know when you were talking about spirit and soul before, I was looking at that, like, how do I feel that? Like, when is my, what's the difference between my spirit and my soul? And and looking at these concepts uh, afresh every day, because just because I thought it was one way yesterday, I noticed it can change today, where as we evolve, the words that we, you know, the etymology of our language and the way things uh, mean. I mean, I remember one time I wrote an article, and I think Greg came back and pondered the law of one, and th- and then I was like on this for a week. Now, do I resonate with the law of one? Now, I resonate with the principle of the law of wa- one, but do I resonate with law? And I was thinking, ooh, well, the yeah. law teaching, that was part of that whole thing with the law teaching, so I resonate with this thing of we are unity consciousness, but maybe I don't resonate with a being that created a structure. So it's kind of like with all these things, I really look at the law of structure. So, you know, I'm not saying all Anunnaki are bad, but it's like there is a mess on this planet, and somebody somebody's created the mess, and we know that a lot of what we see as far as our writings and things that were written down, there's an agenda because it's the victors of war that wrote this stuff down, but that doesn't mean it's all bad because this is the other thing that's been coming to me about light and shadow, that all storylines are part of the shadow. Not to say that the shadow is bad because shadow defines light. And in, in a good painting, I was pondering this today with a friend, if somebody paints, you have to have shadows to define your textures of if you want to paint something in third dimension, if you didn't have any shadow, you wouldn't actually see the form of what it is. But the problem has been is the polarization of all the storyline. Because when you're writing a story, as soon as you see behind your hand of what's not present and forward of what you're writing, anything that's past actually is the shadow. If that resonates, and I'm even explaining it, that that doesn't necessarily make it uh, good or bad, but um, yeah, there's something with the storyline of all these beings, and I, I just don't even know how I feel about a lot of them. I mean, I, I, mean, I can't say 
and the Naki stuff, a lot of it feels good to me, but I'm, I'm open at this point of not wanting to judge anything, to take everything in and, and uh, you know, constantly reevaluate. It's like constantly remaking, reevaluating all the time. It, it's, it, it's ongoing. Yeah, I, I really would like to get to a point where I know the truth about what happened, mm-hmm. you know, and I think we're working towards that, and I know that the truth is found within, uh, but, you know, there's just no book within inside of me right now that opens up and tells me the truth, and that's because our DNA is not completely turned on. Now, there will, mm-hmm. what I understand and what I've always said is I just can't imagine with my logical mind how anybody could ever on this planet make a choice as to whether they want to ascend or, uh, you know, basically a choice about anything without knowing who they are. So I've always said that there has to be some event that happens where every single person is shown like they have a quick life review and they connect with source and then they can come back in like an instant and, you know, like no time is left here, but everyone is will be having their moment, so to speak. And then they'll know. They'll know their past lives that are occurring at the same time. They'll know who their oversoul is. They'll know. They'll have that connection with Source, and they'll know why they're here. So mm-hmm. when that happens, I think um, some people will take it and run with it, and some people will act like it never happened and that they're losing their mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think yeah. that has to happen yeah. before we can. And then that's when we once we once that connection is reestablished, then we have the answers to everything that we could ever, you know, hope for to have about the history of not only humanity but the Earth and our solar system and the galaxy and everything. And then none, of, there won't be any of this deception uh, coming out. You know, these the, Marduk has gone back and changed a lot of the. Uh, you know, the tablets and truth and books and everything uh, to try to keep us where we are. But uh, he's going to have a really big surprise when, you know, we have all all the access within us to that information. <laughs> and ultimately, I, I, I would think that the uh, Akashic records hold all the truth, untainted truth, uh, you know, assuming that Marduk hasn't gone through there and changed that. I, I would assume that all the records that that are held there and the Akashic records would, would, would give us all the answers that we need to know. So it's just a matter of hopefully um, our next level of spiritual progression where those records are available to us and we'll know the truth. There's no hiding from that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Missy, how do you see this, um, this year unfolding? Well, it is it is definitely uh, interesting, and when I look outside, it makes me want to go within because a lot of uh, what I see, I, I don't, you know, on a personality level, I don't necessarily like uh, looking at, you know, political candidates. Uh, it's a clown show and, you know, mm-hmm. this kind of thing. Uh, I just keep getting, uh, as I look outside to go within, to keep, going through another level of purification and looking uh, looking deeper at myself and, you know, looking at the law of attraction as far as what I put out, what I'm getting back. And I feel like I'm going actually going through another uh, mission upgrade again. I know my session work uh, with people has changed. It seems like the grid work is changing. It seems like everything's always changing. Uh, when I look at things, I still think on the outside it looks like we're, you know, we're in for a bumpy ride when you look at, you know, certain states and, you know, what they're going through if you want to look at, you know, uh, vaccines and all that. See, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on any of that stuff out side anymore because I came up with a mantra recently that drama is bad for my adrenal glands. <laughs> so I don't want to spend too much time looking at it because, I mean, not that I believe in solipsism, but I know on the boat my friend Joshua and I were talking about this, where solipsism is the belief that uh, 
everything that you see in your world is your creation. But then if everybody mm-hmm. believes that, then everybody's creation is that. So we have this collective consciousness. It's it's a dicey thing of figuring out what's ours, uh, you know, the other beings, which are on another level, even though they're archontic, on some level they're, you know, still a part of us, and how do we, you know, the different projections from the different lenses of consciousness. So looking at all these pieces and, you know, figuring out what can I have the, where it, where's my energy most valuable uh, being spent? How can I be the most effective with what I'm doing in the moment with uh, people, places, and things and make the most difference? So that's the question for me that I've been working on uh, answering uh, daily, and uh, I know I'm supposed to be writing more. I have been doing some writing, but not enough, and, uh, you know, we have still a lot of responsibilities just here <clears throat> at you the know, house with all of our animals and things. It is very interesting, you know, when when we, um, people like you and me and Greg, um, we've been writers before, and I haven't written very much in a while. It It, it just seems like it has been time to... Of course, I've got a lot of responsibility going on with all the websites that I have right now, but it's it just seems like to me that we can't overwork ourselves. We can't push ourselves too far in doing things for other people right now when we really, you know, have to uh, make sure that we have that time for ourselves. And I spend a lot more time, you know, reading material and studying and contemplating and just resting uh, lately other than my, you know, all the websites that I have and the conference coming up. But um, it, it is interesting. I, sometimes when you're a writer, if, if people are listening out there that are writers and contributing to websites, sometimes you can get to this place where you're like, I just don't know what's true anymore, you know. So I'm just going to take a break until I figure it out. <laughs> and sometimes it's writing about that. And what's come to me lately, too, why is it, this is another one that's come to me, instead of service to self or service to others, I got that if it's one, it's all one. It's service to self and others because we have to take care of ourselves first before we can serve someone else. And I agree. Even our language, I'm thinking, are there something about our language? Why does it have that byway spin of either or, of polarization in, you know, like ascension, descension, service to self, service to others? And I've been really looking at that, thinking, is this all part of the machine? You know, this whole... Thing. And like this thing with Marduk and these beings, is it is that part of the machine? I mean, this is just where I am. I'm, I guess I'm at a place I'm not sure what's true anymore either. And it's okay. I I'm know. actually okay with it. Yeah, I mean, yes, because I know that this is just an experience. And yes, it's a real holographic experience. We generate energy out of this, which is emotions, energy in motion. And um, we are uh, we're moving out of it. I mean, it's become so ridiculous, and the vibration match uh, for the old uh, paradigm is just not sinking. And so we're kind of like on this teetering edge. And every you know every every time we wake up, and it, it's like, oh my God, am I still here? <laughs> you know, and when is this gonna end? But it's on the other hand, you you know, you do try to have to make it. Um, joyful, as joyful as you can, you know, and know that you're here to hold the the energies, to hold the high vibration and everything. But I know a lot of people out there are getting, you know, they're getting a little tired, and they're they're you know they're struggling with the you know the number of jobs reducing, and the the cost of food, you know, where it used to be. You know, fifty dollars. What used to be fifty dollars even three months ago is now already a hundred dollars at the grocery store, double. And but yet the price of gas goes down. Nothing is making any sense anymore. And the whole world is like a three ring circus, if you ask me. Not just politics. So it's getting, in my opinion, to the maximum point where it's like we have to bust out of this reality soon. And I, 
you know, I just wonder how you feel, uh, how soon, how soon, soon is to you, or, or do you have a lot more patience than me? Well, well, I know um, I ended up with a, a little bit of a mm, cough lung thing when uh, I came back from this trip, okay, you know, not just being on airplanes and a, a closed in space because I hadn't experienced something like this with my physical self, you know, in a couple of years. I've been, you know, doing a lot of hot yoga, a lot of supplements, everything's been groovy as far as the physical body and feeling pretty good. So I was looking at what the lungs represent and representing um, Gemini, you know, as far as the astrology and the parts of the body and the cell salts, if you're familiar with uh, Santos uh, Bonacci's work, which I'm sure you are. But um, I was looking at that and I was thinking, okay, well, does that mean something is, we're going to come into something around the end of May or June? And I know there's been talk of a financial restructure. See, I'm not going to put a lot of energy into this because there's a lot of, you know, people will say this and that or I'll hear things or even get hits that something could happen, but then those timelines could change. I was thinking, what is going to be going on in the beginning of the summer around the electrical peak? And I was getting something could be going on. You know, like, okay, I'll give you, for instance, I was getting the hit recently that this storm that we had, uh, you know, when we got the snow, we got a foot of snow here when the mid-Atlantic was hit. I was shown that that storm that hit D.C. was a totally inorganic storm because of Absolutely. some things that, that the United States does to Israel. I don't even like to, you know, play in these fields and talk about this stuff too much, but there is always something going on, and I, and I knew something was going on because I kept getting hits about Washington, D.C., where I'd see the obelisk, you know, I'd watch something and it would show up, and then I'd listen to something and D.C. would show up again. Now, the funny thing is Colorado showed up a lot recently. It didn't have anything to do with this Super Bowl, uh, uh, what do you call it, a Hunger Games dark, <laughs> that's what I call it, <laughs> Days, but uh, I don't know. I'm getting something about May and June, and I don't know if, you know, possibly we're going to be at some kind of tipping or breaking point collectively for something to happen. We know gas, the price of gas going down is a manipulation, which actually supposedly is not good for people in the stock market because that means they're not making money on oil prices. I don't know. Everything is really manipulated now. It's uh, extremely fragile. I feel everything in our reality is extremely fragile. You know, markets are fragile, just everything, everything's fragile, everything. you know, pe yeah. people's health is fragile, you know, another thing is like if somebody isn't feeling good because somebody went to the grocery store and got their free vaccine or whatever, and then they're a carrier of that for somebody else to actually get sick, it's worse than being exposed to somebody that really has a, the, a true flu, but when somebody gets a little dose of, you know, the vaccine, not that I can prove that, but, you know, all, all these things, everything is so fragile, and, you know, we were saying to 2017, I hope we go through a shift in consciousness, uh, you know, with grace and ease, I would say drastically, but with grace and ease, because we don't want anything yes. too drastic as fragile as it is uh, soon because it can't go on yes. this way. And a friend of mine today I was talking to, she said, we're in the shift now. I feel that, you know, this fragility that we're in, we're going to be going through a shift. And I know with myself, I am remaking myself constantly, and it's like I don't re I recognize myself and where I was a couple months ago. I feel like I, I just keep changing. But what we have now is we have uh, the bifurcation, okay? I know Lisa Renee's talked about this. This is a, a good thing to call this. We have these different reality bubbles, and when they bump up against each other, it just seems like they're getting further away as two points get further away. You have a, a spiraling up of, for some people, things are getting better and better. You know, the, their consciousness is going up, their frequency is going up, so things get better, and they go to that higher reality bubble, 
and then there's people that are on a downward spiral that as things compound, they keep going down and down and down and down. And that's what's happening uh, for some people. And all this causes friction in the in the tectonic plates and even rough seas because we were on that boat. We had some days of really rough seas. And then I come home and I see that there was a, a cruise on the Atlantic that going from New York to Florida on Royal Caribbean that actually had to turn around and take a boy. I was glad I wasn't on that boat. But I'm seeing how people's emotional state are actually affecting these storms, even though a lot of them are inorganic and there's, you know, harp and different things like that, but people's emotions are amplifying everything that's going on on this planet because people are not aware of their emotional state. Yes, I I hear you and I agree with you, Missy, and I think that, you know, I just think it's more proof that something is coming uh, that will um, maybe split those timelines, those uh not necessarily timelines, but vibrational frequencies, bubbles uh, in two. And that's what Dolores Cannon has talked about. And speaking of that, I have someone in the queue that we're about to bring on that uh, has a lot of information tied to Dolores Cannon. So I'm going to say goodnight to you for now, Missy, and I really appreciate you calling in. And I do, uh, I do agree with you, sister. I mean, every time we get together and talk, I just shake my head up and down. You could, you know, call me a bobblehead. <laughs> I miss you guys, and I, and I wish I could go to your thing if you weren't uh, so far away. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be heading to Florida for a while, but um, you know, I, I, I miss you at your event, and I love your organ. It's beautiful. I posted the pictures of all that. Boy, I'm amazed at that. That is just wow. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> it was when it was in the sun today. There's some sparkles inside of it too, and it just it was only like 66 or 68 outside, but it it all warmed up, and when I brought it back in, and I was. I was putting my intentions into it. It was all, all of it was warm. It, it was oh, like neat. it had been yeah, in the oven. It was really cool. Uh, uh, yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, how lovely. And to lay with that, that would be really neat. <laughs> well, we're going to be recording yeah. the conference, so you'll be you'll be able to see it on YouTube. Okay, excellent. All excellent. right, Misty. It's so good to hear from you. Okay, you guys have a good one and soak up some of that sun. The spring's on the way here. <laughs> Can't get here soon okay. enough after this winter. Okay. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye-bye. So, Greg, did you have anything you'd like to follow up on uh, what Missy was talking about? I have a lot, but we don't have a lot yeah. of time. But um, one thing, um, there's something that is coming up. You were asking about a time date, and uh, I was just listening right before the show. I was listening listening to uh, Cliff High, the web bot, the guy that uses uh, predictive analysis of uh, words over uh, the Internet. And uh, what he was saying was that around April this year, he's saying that there's going to be some serious changes in uh, specifically gold and silver. He's saying that they're going to start skyrocketing. It's going to get to the point of where they're not going to be available, and then people are going to want to buy Bitcoin, but all the Bitcoin reserves are going to be bought up, and there won't be any of that available. So this is coming relatively quickly, according to the web bot. Whether that happens or not, who knows? All I tell people, though, is the same thing over and over again. You know, be sure that you do have some reserves of, you know, food and water, and uh, you know, some health stuff put aside: toilet paper, paper towels, paper plates, all that good stuff. Um, and it's not fear mongering at all. You know, we are probably going to have to take a step backwards before we take a huge leap forward. But it is also possible that there is something that's in motion. And you sent me that article um, last week that there is something in place that may make the transition instantaneous. So just to be on the safe side, you know, be prepared. The other thing was um, Missy was talking about that, snow, that, that storm that went up the coast. Well, we did write about that here on N5D about this uh, energy wave that came up from Antarctica shot right through Florida at the exact time and you can see the timestamp of when it went through Florida. It was at the exact same time that we had this rare tornado hit us on Siesta Key. And that ended up being this uh, snowstorm that shot up the coast and ended up 
giving a lot of snow all throughout the uh, East Coast. So uh, that was a, definitely a, something that was geoengineered. And uh, I contacted, and she was mentioning about Lisa Renee, and I contacted Lisa, and uh, my, sus- my suspicion was that it was uh, geoengineered to open up the Stargate that Lisa had closed during our conference in 2013 here in, in, on, uh, in Sarasota. And that's what Lisa basically confirmed was, yeah, that, that was an attempt to uh, open up that Stargate because the uh, malevolence are trying to escape and they're trapped here uh, to be held accountable for their actions. So there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes, and we're paying attention to it, and we're reporting it as soon as it comes out on N5D. So pay attention. Stay, uh, stay, stay tuned to us and uh, check up check up with us every day because you never know what you're going to get with uh, with us on articles. Matter of fact, I have a great article coming out tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, it's a, it's called uh, David Bowie, the next stage of evolution, and I went through a bunch of his songs and he gives hints uh, about where we're heading in our spiritual evolution. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, I wonder if David went back to his to the starship that's hanging, you know, up above there or if he went back to another planet or if he just exited the universe. I mean, mm. he, <laughs> he he definitely uh he definitely He's was not, not from, from here. around here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, did you ever um, notice the pupils? He has one huge pupil and the other one's normal size. Yeah, now they said that that happened in the childhood accident, but it could very well be that he's just different that way, you know? Yes. I mean, you never know From, what they make up about people, but we accepted it, uh, you know, uh, as David Bowie. I mean, he's amazing. On his planet, they all look like that. <laughs> yeah, they all have two different colored eyes <laughs> and one pupil that's larger than the other, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Apparently. Listen, um, you're you're more into the financial stuff than me, but um, what I found amazing is as we're watching the Nikkei uh, stock market dropping so absolutely wild, yet Mm -hmm. it still hasn't caused the complete shutdown of the Nikkei or the U.S. stock market. I mean, they're just pumping, they're just pumping things, they're holding things up like inflatable balloon underneath it just continuing to pump 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 and it's it's going to burst eventually but um uh you know every day it just seems like how could how can it still be going on i mean in 2015 it was supposed to be the shemita you know the the grand uh the grand ending to all of the seven year cycles to where in 2015 the stock market was supposed to crash worse than it did in 2008 or worse than it did in the Great Depression, but we didn't see that then. But, but my point is, is not focusing on the negative as Missy was trying to point out, but when you can observe these things, mm-hmm. the interesting and exciting thing about this is that it hasn't crashed, meaning that. What if we were going to perhaps make some kind of shift uh, without these things having to crash? I mean, even in another reality, there could be some people suffering in another timeline, actually, um, where in their reality it did crash. But here we are in our reality where things were supposed to already, you know, be crumbling and falling, but yet it's it's just like Groundhog Day every time you wake up. Um, that could be a good thing. What do you think about that? Well, it's it's funny that you mentioned the Nikkei because it opened an hour and 40 minutes ago, and it's already down 646 points in just an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes. Um, so, and it's got a long way to go. It's at 15,000 right now, just like the uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So with uh, the, the Nikkei taking a huge dump right now, there's a great chance that the Dow Jones will follow suit tomorrow and probably lose triple digits, probably two, 300 points at least. Um, so there is a collapse that is going on. It's a long way from a total collapse, and I'm sure they're going to try to prop this up for as long as possible. And it is my highest intention that this transition is as smooth and as easy as possible for everyone. Uh, I don't want to see us take it that that step backwards. That honestly, my my heart and my gut is telling me that's probably what's going to happen. 
but I would love more than anything for this to be a smooth transaction. Let them prop it up for as long as it takes until we're ready to make this this jump, and then let's do it. <laughs> Okay, well, I don't really follow the stock markets, but yesterday you said the Nikkei was down like 900 points overall. Yeah, that was the other day, yeah, 930 points. And like I said, right now it's, it's down 657 points as we, as we speak. Well, we all know that <laughs> that they're driving the uh, – they're, they meaning, I don't know, maybe China, Russia, they're trying to drive the price of the – of oil, of gas down, and, and oil per barrel, so that the U.S. Um, can no longer push that, you know, as the domination and control tool, uh, gasoline and the price of oil, which has pretty much run the world since uh, what the 19 early 1900s, like 1920s, and all that with the big oil booms and stuff. The it was all part of the dollar. Rockefeller. Yeah, all part of the Rockefeller uh, plan uh, in the oil mm-hmm. fields and everything. Uh, so you know that's a start, and with with uh, the price of gasoline going down so low, um, they're not uh, drilling anymore, and that helps with fracking. And they're also not uh, uh, transporting it as much. Uh, but what an interesting thing is that all of the ships, from what I understand, the cargo ships, the freighters out there yes. that, that that come over from China or basically pretty much Nothing. anywhere in the world. There's no ships carrying any cargo across the ocean since January 1st, which yeah. means, folks, I mean, we have huge Walmart distribution centers here. We have, the, you know, the, the warehouses are all set up here. But, you know, when those warehouses aren't getting shipments, then, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're going to start seeing the supply on the shelves go down and the prices go up. So, you know, as Greg mentioned, now is the time just to get – a little bit of stock because uh, of stock of foods because you know um i just can't imagine how we would volunteer to come into this lifetime and know that we were going to go through something as horrible as the great depression and have to be camping that is not in my mm-hmm. card and that is that i mean all my cards are all for prosperity and abundance so i just can't imagine that that would happen there has to be a backup plan folks there may be a little, a little bit of go ahead well, there may be a little bit of hard times, um, you know, where you go to the store and they don't have everything that you need. But there, there should be enough food. There should be a backup plan as to how people are going to get fed. Mm-hmm. And as I, I was mentioning, the, if you have a little extra money, get onto eBay, buy some 90% uh, junk silver, it's called. It's uh, coins that are 1964 or earlier, uh, dimes, quarters, and half dollars. Uh, you can buy, I think, a roll of dimes for maybe $120 for 50 dimes. And uh, the the junk silver equivalents of one dime is about $3 or so when it's all said and done. And uh, you can use that for bartering. You know, if you know somebody that has eggs and chickens, you can give them a silver, silver dime. They'll gladly take it. Um, and do the same with uh, quarters, too. Have, like, different denominations where you can use them for bartering because if times do get hard and the stores shut down, there is hyperinflation and the, the stores get wiped out, you got something to work with. So, you know, and you don't need to go crazy on this thing. You don't need 50 pounds of silver <laughs> or anything like that. But just to have something like that will put you in a position to at least be able to barter and get a few things that you might need. Yes, and I always, you know, wake up every day with my intentions, and I've been praying for my replicator every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, I mean, we're probably the only planet that doesn't have the knowledge about replicating technology. I've been studying a lot about replicators, and it seems that a replicator can produce um, uh, produce that is just as organic as uh, produce that you can grow. However, people who grow their own produce, there seems to be more of the natural nutrients in the soil, you know, when, once the soil is cleaned up, uh, the soil that can be grown uh, that you just can't get 
um, by replicating it. It's just there's just you get more nutrients. It's just better for you to grow it, and that's going to be in more demand, even though you have a replicator. Um, and you can rec- you'll be able to like replicate food. It can be uh, scanned. Once it's scanned and put into the memory, it seems that you could just pull up whatever you need. However, there won't be any of it won't be possible with a replicator to create anything that's harmful to you or guns or something uh, that would be, cause harm to other people. So it, it would have to be tweaked to be like if it was meat based, then it would have to be made of something that. Um, maybe soybeans that taste like meat, taste just like meat, or even have the um, all of the texture of everything that you know, like a cheeseburger would taste like, but without the without the meat. Or maybe even you could replicate meat without having to kill an animal. I mean, I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. sure if that's if there's anything bad with that, as long as you don't have to kill an animal. Yeah, uh, replicate it out of the prana, the chi that's in the air. I, I, yeah. yeah, and ideally there there would be two replicators for every neighborhood, so you could use those replicators to replicate the replicators, and so yeah. everyone would have one. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good way to start out, and yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, these are these. This is something that every ship has. I mean, there's no no other way to live. <laughs> so, and there's ships cloaked everywhere above us. So somewhere, everywhere. somewhere along the way, <laughs> they're going to have to drop off a replicator with a parachute. And let it land in our yard because yes. I don't have a garden. I do have seeds. You know, we've got seeds, but, you know, we live on sand. So one thing that's really most precious that I need to go buy is potting soil. Organic soil. <laughs> you know, our yard is sand. So uh, yeah, these are little things. These are just little things that, that we're not paranoid. But when we look around and see what's happening and we know there aren't any ships delivering anything, we get most of our stuff from importing and it's not coming, then, you know, uh, I bought an extra pair of my favorite shoes because I know they probably come from overseas. You know, if they're made by Skechers or Nike or whatever, they're not going to be importing that stuff right now. So, um, yeah, these are just, this is proof, folks, that, that... we are going through a huge change, and in the end, it's going to come out better. And you know what? Someone has been really patient waiting in the queue, and I'd like to bring her on now. Um, sure. If you're, if, uh, okay, cool. Well, Candace Croc Goldman, welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show again. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Candace. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, Greg. You know, as I'm sitting here listening, I'm thinking, we're not going to sleep at all down in Florida, are we? We're just going to talk into the night. Every <laughs> night, just keep on talking, right? <laughs> That's a typical day Absolutely. and night for Michelle and me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're just going to have such a great time. This has been such a great show so far already. Really great topics. I'd love to hear you two chatting like this a little more often. It's just so much fun, just this organic sort of chat about everything that's going on. Yes, oh, we uh, well, bounce around I, I, on topics all day. <laughs> I have to twist. I have to twist his arm to get on the radio. So this is yes. a really rare thing, you know, to have him. He he used to do his Monday show, and uh, he mm-hmm. pops in on my show every now and then. I just love to have his energy with with me. But Candace, we're we're really looking forward to having you um, speak at our conference coming up in yes. little over a week. Well, I'm so excited, too. And, Michelle, I was a little surprised that you said that it was 66 there in Florida. I, I'm over in Austin right now, and I think it hit 80 um, or near 80 in mid-afternoon today. And I was just outside just enjoying the heck out of the warm weather. And uh, well, I guess I'm preparing. <laughs> that That's coming our way. And I was looking at the extended forecast, and it's going to be mid-upper 70s for the weekend of our conference. So it's going to be beautiful <sighs> weather here. Uh, I just can't wait. I am so looking forward to the gathering of like-minded souls that um, that will be coming, and I'm happy to hear about the uh, the tickets uh, going down to the last little bit. Congratulations! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I I do believe you build it, and they will come, and there's the energy will be so palpable. 
in there. It, it, there's just nothing better than being able to share a conversation face to face with somebody that you can feel comfortable with talking about just about anything. And I think that the people that are coming to the conference are going to be like that. You could just you could just have an open conversation about anything. And we hope that you join us uh, for the meet and greet section of it at lunch where we're allowing people to have lunch with us instead of we get an hour and a half. So instead of leaving uh, the venue, they can just stay there with us and just hang out and chat. Oh, yeah, you can count on that. Absolutely. Sounds like fun. You know, uh, we were just there uh, a few hours ago <laughs> at the uh, conference uh, hall at the Devon, and uh, we were – arranging the chairs to get a picture of what it would look like and it's going to be amazing it's going to be beautiful and uh, i think everyone that attends is really going to dig it so candace um do you have any comments that you'd like to add to anything that we've talked about tonight oh my gosh um well you've covered so many things Mm -hmm. (laughs) just just kind of crazy kind of stuff uh all over all over the place got all kinds of ideas going through my head. There's, you know, some of um, your listeners might know that that my work is based upon Dolores Cannon's work. And as I was thinking about all of the different things that you were talking about, all the different topics, I was thinking about some of her ideas. And I know, and I'm sure, and we're getting some indication, of course, since she's passed from this plane into the next, She's making some adjustments <laughs> to some of her thoughts and, and concepts and conclusions that, that she came to while she was in, in 3D. But that doesn't uh, invalidate at all some of the things that she had discovered. Just like Michelle and you too, Greg, were talking about, you know, truth. Well, what's truth? There's there's individual truth. There's a collective truth. There's a shared truth and agreement. And then there's variations on it depending on your perspective. So, um, you know, there's that. And I was thinking about the different topics that you were, um, you know, discussing and about all the different in parallel reality um, indications and, and concepts you were talking about. And that's a big one. And that's a big one that I am really pondering a lot these days about how we are, I believe, switching through timelines in, at a, in a much faster rate than we ever have been before. And that's why I think some of what you're seeing is what you're seeing and some of the strange Mandela effect type things are going on the way they are, meaning there are so many timelines converging at this one now moment all of the time. You know, the people around you are coming from multiple, multiple different timelines, and there are um, ways of looking at this that make the whole idea of being human and multidimensional just so extremely interesting. And I, I think the big thing that's really changing is Um, not that we haven't done this throughout time and throughout history, but I believe we're doing it at an extremely fast pace now where we're just kind of going back and forth across the dial, whereas perhaps before it just wasn't so quick. And pretty soon we're going to be able to do it at will, and pretty soon we're going to have memories of the different timelines. And I think these are some of the things that are coming down the pike for us. See what I'm wondering, Candace and and Michelle, is our, our is our reality a conglomeration of our individual experiences in conjunction with the highest probable outcome? That's what do you girls that's think? Excellent. That's an excellent question. Um, you know, you would think yes, if you're thinking of you know a benevolent um, um, creator. Uh, or ultimate creator of all that is. And then there's that whole idea a lot of people put forth that, you know, there really is no good or negative or positive or negative. It, it, everything is everything. So where does benevolency come in that? I mean, you know, these are great questions. I, I hope so. My heart sings when you say that, Greg, and I, I think mm-hmm. so. And it, I'd like to think that that's the reality that I'm in. Michelle? Well, I think that, um, one of the biggest things we can realize about ourselves is that we are truly multidimensional, meaning that our oversoul 
does have uh, an aspect probably in every single single dimension, every single level of that dimension. There is um, an alternate timeline like Candace was talking about that has Mm -hmm. us in it. So, but it's where we focus our consciousness at the moment. So there could be um, a timeline that someone in the lower third dimension is experiencing where they think that they see us there, but it's actually just um, maybe a copy of us or it's part of us that's um, helping them to finish out their experience, whereas our true consciousness, uh, what, what we are experiencing in the now is right here. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't uh, eventually uh, move our consciousness uh, by bilocate or being uh, in several of those timelines at once and experience it all at once. It's just that in this particular body that we have with the reptilian brain, uh, which has cut us off from those abilities, we couldn't even nearly handle doing that right now. But we will shift to uh, an awareness and a consciousness that will allow us to not... I wouldn't think that we want to go backwards to the lower third dimension to experience that part, but we could... um, we could move maybe to a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimensional uh, aspect of ourselves and uh, experience that part. But as a collective consciousness on Earth, I still do believe that my family member could be experiencing something different than I'm experiencing. Hope that answered the mm-hmm. question okay. I, I understand what you're saying. And I find it interesting that Dolores Cannon said that every choice you make creates multiple, probably endless, uh, possible timelines. Um, For example, if you choose to wear a yellow shirt instead of a red shirt, in alternate realities, you've worn every shirt that's in your closet, and these are all alternate realities that are out there that, you know, and and that's on a a smaller picture, but on, on a bigger picture, every decision we make, whether we decide to purchase GMOs or whether we decide to purchase organic food, um, these are influencing the highest probable outcome of what our collective is experiencing. And I think that on on some of these larger decisions, I don't think it makes much of a difference what color shirt you wear unless that color seems to trigger somebody into having a better day or maybe giving you a compliment. That that could create, I guess, uh, some positive results on the color of whatever shirt you choose to wear. But... uh, (laughs) Yeah, I guess I guess they all do make a difference in the end. But uh, you know, like like what I was saying about Dolores, you know, these are all different timelines that are created through our choices, and I think that that's what we are experiencing right now is the highest probable probable outcome. I do think that there's a collective agreement as to what we will be seeing when we look at a tree or the sky, or um, you know, when we drive down a road. Um, we we have a collective agreement that we will experience, you know, MLK Boulevard to be MLK and First Street to be First Street. But um, you know that can uh, that those things aren't important because those those are just like the hologram itself. But it's the mm-hmm. experience and and the reality that we are. Um, feeling and experiencing and the, and the choices that we make that's the difference. So, um, Candace, um, one of the things that uh, Dolores talked about um, most in the books was the New Earth. And uh, Missy Hill uh, was talking about the bifurcation. And that's something that Lisa Renee, um, and she has a website called energysynthesis.com, and Missy was describing it, but I'm going to just go over it very briefly. The bifurcation, to me, is where you have vibrational resonance splitting up. Like if you were to look at cymatics and you see um, sand dropped on a plate that's vibrating at when you play music, the sand will um, move around and gather. parts of it will gather together and make patterns and stuff. I think that's what's happening right now. The Earth's being vibrated at a rate 
that is kind of shaking things up. You see people moving from one end of the United States to the other. You see people, you know, up and just lose their job and have to, you know, find another job, maybe move across town. People are moving towards the vibrations that they feel like that they're more comfortable in, or maybe they just get forced into that. I think that um, we are seeing um, people of high vibration want to hang out together, and people um, that haven't raised their vibration that are maybe, um, you know, not not aware and awake or willing to even want to be happy or make a choice to be happy or to change their vibration are are really hanging out together. And some of them mm-hmm. are, you know, possibly even, le- even leaving the planet at this time. But um, tell, um, could you just give our listeners a little uh, excerpt about the new earth and, and whether you feel like, you know, we're really close to what Dolores has <laughs> talked about for all those years? Well, yes, Um Thank you uh, for asking that question. So the interesting thing about Dolores is probably the last um, two or even two and a half years of her life uh, where I was spending, you know, quite a bit of time with her when she was in Arkansas teaching. And people would ask, this was probably the number one question that people would ask um, during lectures and during classes is about the new earth because everybody was so interested in it and asking it, almost the same kind of questions that you're asking right now, um, they would ask Dolores. And Dolores would would answer that question the same way every time, which is she would say, the new earth is already here right now, and particularly for those who already are understanding, already are there, already are vibrating at that, at that rate. And there are some... You know, she would say that, and then there would be some follow-up questions or other people would ask, and people would say, well, now, Dolores, how can you even say that when there's this war going on over here or when there's this weather event going on over here or when they're, you know, spraying the chemtrails in the sky? And I could just see Dolores laughing about that. And then she would she would talk about, she would say, well, she said, you know, is is the war in your backyard? And the person would say, well, no, you know. And, and then they would say, and when that storm hit, you know, did it take away your house? No. And um, and she would just smile and nod a little bit then with her, you know, her fingers together. <laughs> and she would say, um, you know, let me tell you then, you know, you are on – the new earth, whereas some of those things are happening th- that are that are not, and that doesn't mean that absolutely everything positive is new earth and absolutely everything is not. I mean, th- those are some generalities. But she did have some very interesting things to say about about the chemtrailing, which was whenever anybody would just say, "Dolores, just look up, Dolores, well, look in the sky, Dolores," and she just wouldn't even ever go there. She's like, "Look, I'm not living in that earth." They're not, they, I don't even think about it. Those things have nothing to do with me. That's at a lower vibration than where I am. And it doesn't matter if you're seeing it or, or not. It just means it's kind of like two radio stations occasionally, you know, overlapping or, or playing at the same time. And I like to think of it as uh, pieces of uh, uh, transparent paper um when when you were talking about the different kinds of reality you know individual versus collective i like to think about your particular reality being like a piece of tracing paper and if you just have it by itself and you write your you know your own or you have your own kind of reality and then you gather it up with other people's individual reality well you, if you look at that as a totality there is a collective thing happening there and maybe some of the parameters or the size of the paper or whatever but if you remove everyone else's conflict or dramas or some of the things going on in their life and you just just view your own sheet of paper it may have nothing to do with what's going on with others so you know these are great questions that i think We, with our conscious mind, we just love talking about this, and we love analyzing it, and we love thinking about it, and and we're we're key to and keen to um, 
you know, try to understand when things might happen, and we like the very logical kinds of things. We like the the linear kinds of answers, this summer, April, you know, these numbers or whatever. But I think sometimes some of the bigger things that are happening here are not um, – are not for the logical brain to view at all or to consider at all. It, it, it's on it's on another level. Yet we still, of course, look at it in that way. You know, we uh, we have to. That's kind of our conscious mind, and it's very much part of our programming, especially here in the Western society, where the logical brain, the very linear brain, the very black and white brain, has been. Um, the one that's been the preferred manner of looking at everything. You know, when you um, when you get to some other cultures where they haven't been as programmed as we have, and you better believe it that we here in America and in Europe and in the Western societies, we've been programmed. And part of our programming is very much that left brain stuff. But if you can... Let some of that go and think, uh, you know, in, your, in the other side of your brain sometimes a little bit. Some of these questions become a, a little less um, um, insistent, shall we say. <laughs> and, and, and I find that just, just fascinating. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm as left brain programmed as anybody else I was brought up in this society. So I, I understand where that comes from. And sometimes when we go around in these circles trying to, to analyze and come up with um, these definitive answers, because we, we like them, you know, <laughs> we like to fill in the box and get the answers, but sometimes we're just, we're just not going to get them, you know, and we're just here for the, for the living in the now, you know, and who even knows what that is. Maybe our living in the now is that we're flipping through alternate universes at the rate of, you know, thousands a day for all we know, right? Hello? <laughs> hey, everybody. Sorry about that. We just had a complete crash. <laughs> Candace, okay. I'm sorry you had to hang up. And, uh, well, I hear an echo. Uh, Greg, do you have me on speaker? I hear you fine, um, but let me just try this. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, folks. We had a little bit of difficulty where my computer completely crashed, and I'm calling in on the cell phone now. And, uh, Candace, I want to thank you so much for joining us, and I'm sorry that we didn't get to finish commenting on your call. And I do appreciate everything that you said. Greg, are you hearing an echo? I hear an echo on your end. Yeah, that's what I mean. Do you hear an echo on my end? Yes. Okay. Well, I suppose what we should do is just go ahead and end the show at this point. We didn't have any callers in the queue that had their hand up. and I, we did, didn't find have it, any- I did find it interesting that we were talking about the New Earth when it crashed. Uh, you know, Maybe the controllers don't want that information out there. <laughs> I guess so, but I mean, I would like to talk some more. But apparently, I can't even hear myself because I mean, I can't concentrate because I'm talking back to myself. But the echo is so bad. Yeah. So thank you for uh, logging in though and trying to get the show back together. But I think um, for now, we'll just go ahead and end the show. I want to thank you for being uh, part of uh, our reality tonight and giving your. Um, you know, your voice, your voice matters on the, on these opinions of, of what's happening. And I know that everything is going to be absolutely fantastic, and we are in the middle of the shift right now. And it's just a matter of focusing on what we do want and not what we don't want. So with that, I'll say good night and love to everybody out there, whether you listen to live or on the recording. Namaste, everyone. <laughs> good night, everyone.